Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and today we are going to be looking at one of the stupidest articles I have read in a long time. In a long time. And of course, of course this person is a professor of history. Of course he is. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is from everybody's favorite, the History News Network, which uh, I will remind you is a publication that is an organ of George Washington University, and they about daily publish uh, news articles. This one is from the 1st of March, so little less than a week from now. It's by Walter G. Moss who we will get into, and he's a professor of history at Eastern Michigan University. And this guy, this is just so dumb. I can't think of a different way to describe it. So he's comparing uh, the rise of Hitler and Mussolini to the rise of Donald Trump. And I put that in sarcastic quotations because unlike Hitler and Mussolini, Donald Trump was legitimately elected. So I, right there, I don't know what else you want from me. Clinton knew what the rules is. She chose not to campaign in the Midwest. What, what, what else do you want? First, and... Why this is so stupid? Because I did a similar article uh, a while back. I call I covered a similar article. The Mussolini Hitler is is a at least somewhat valid comparison in that he too was um, legitimately appointed chancellor. Mussolini was not. So half of your article is just wrong. It's just flat out wrong. And not only that. He doesn't explain why the Donald is a dictator. He doesn't because he can't. Obviously, he can't because he's not. But Mussolini, most importantly, he, this is a picture of Mussolini from 1922 during an event called the March on Rome. And basically, what Mussolini did was got a bunch of his thugs together, walked into the palace because Italy is, was then and is still now a constitutional monarchy, walked into the palace and told the king, do what I say or else. And he did. He did. He bowed to Mussolini's demands, basically made him a dictator. And within um, three or four years, all other political parties had been outlawed. And he had effective control over the country. But that is not, that's not a legitimate takeover. Like, He's, he says in the article that only four out of 14 members when this happened were fascists. It's like, yeah, yeah, that was an illegitimate takeover. You don't walk in with a bunch of thugs into, I guess, there is no applicable American case. But imagine if 500 people somehow broke into the White House, like in that one movie, uh, Olympus Has Fallen or something like that. Imagine they break in. And say to Donald, do what, do what I say or else. Even if he did that, which I don't think he would, but even if he did that, the rest of the government wouldn't recognize his authority. They did in Italy. So w what do you want? W the, the Mussolini comparison is just stupid. There's no other way to put it. Hitler, you could, you could make an argument. I think it's a dumb argument. And there are a couple passages that I want to go through. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> he says, well, first of all, he's he's one of these corporate types. He, he, he's one of these people that's like, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders supporters. Uh, forget about him. Forget about Bernie. Don't vote for don't vote for Bernie. You need to unite behind Biden 
or else we'll lose to the to Donald Trump the dictator. And it's like okay, and they're not going to do that. I've said that many times. They're not. He says right here, among Sanders supporters, 53% said they would vote for another Democrat if Bernie was not not selected. 16% said no, 31 were undecided. So 16% flat out are Bernie or bust. Hey, good on them. At least they have integrity. Um, not only, this is just so dumb. Um, I'm, I'm trying to collect my thoughts. Yeah, he said, Donald Trump said about Bernie Sanders, I think he's a communist. <laughs> he's not, he's not. It's just funny. That's just funny. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Um, so, oh, okay. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, here it is. To further clarify the relevance of the Mussolini and Hitler examples, yeah, okay, go ahead and clarify this. For, this uh, like many post World War One governments, Italy possessed a multi party parliamentary system. You know, well, that's kind of a dumb system, if you ask me, but I think some British folks out there would probably disagree. And rightly so. I don't really know a lot about the various pros and cons of parliamentary versus federated republic. Anyway. Aided by post-war dissatisfaction, uh, strikes and land seizures, the pompous and strutting Mussolini played on fears of communism and socialism, shared by those afraid of losing their property and of Marxist atheism in 22, fearful of fascist lawlessness, and hoping that holding power would make Mussolini more moderate. Here, yeah, Victor Emmanuel asked him to form a government. <laughs> No, he didn't. He just didn't. He just didn't. I try to give people the benefit of the doubt most of the time. But the event is called the March on Rome. It's called that. They, he just walked into his house. Oh, God. This is the dumbest thing I've ever read in my whole life. It's just so historically inaccurate. It's, it's so wrong. It boggles my mind. A cursory Google search. Would it, you would have seen this is not true. How, I guess technically, technically he probably at some point was said, okay, can you form a government? But it's like, you have a gun pointed to your head and someone says, you will ask me to do this. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> oh, God, uh, whatever, whatever. Okay, so this brings up a concept, um, that I want to talk about. It's called the peak of Mount Stupid. And it's in reference to imagine you have, um, imagine a graph and it goes something like this. So curves up right away and then it goes down and flattens out like that. So like hopefully you can picture that in your head. And the graph is the peak of Mount Stupid is the top, is the very top. And it has something to do with your confidence in a subject versus your actual knowledge of it. Hopefully you can picture that. And I can remember this distinctly when I was learning about the Second World War. If there's a new topic that you really like and you're, you're starting to get into, eventually you'll reach the peak of Mount Stupid where you think you're an expert. You think you know everything there is to know about World War II or whatever the subject it is. You think you know everything when, in fact, you're at the peak of Mount Stupid. You don't have any idea what you're talking about. That's what this guy is. He's at the peak of Mount Stupid right now. And I can tell you this from personal experience. You could, you may laugh, but there was a time when I was uh, probably 19 or 20 that I legitimately thought, I swear to God, I thought that I had already learned everything there was to know about World War II. And and it's just, everybody goes through this. Everyone does, because we're all human. You start to learn a little bit, you start getting more confident, but eventually you learn enough to know what you don't know. So this guy, I'm sure, read that Victor Emmanuel asked Mussolini to form a government in March of 1922, or, where, or whenever it was, or whenever the month, whatever the month was. He 
He's like, well, good enough for me. No, no, it was an illegitimate takeover of power. It was 100% illegitimate, as opposed to our own most recent election. So, it's just so dumb. And, and it, all right, moving on. <laughs> and that's what I just want to talk about. There's, there's a uh, historian, his name is Anthony Beaver. And he recently wrote a, uh, not recently, 2015, five years ago. He wrote a um, general overview of the Second World War. It's like 500 pages. It's called The Second World War. And the reason that he wrote it, keep in mind, this is a historian who's written probably over 10 books on various different subjects on the Second World War. He said he wrote the book because he kept getting asked to write articles and go on TV shows and talk about World War II. And he felt like a fraud. He felt like a fraud. That's someone who's at the opted end of the peak of Mount Stupid. He's climbed that mountain. He's on the other side. He knows that everything he learns, there's two more things he thinks, oh, wait, I didn't know that. There's two other things I now have to find out. There's so much that I personally don't know about the Second World War. There's literally so much. And if there's a historian who's been doing this for his whole life, and he said he felt like a fraud going on World War II shows and talking about it, that amazes me. That honestly amazes me. And this guy's saying that Victor Emmanuel asked him to form a government. You're a hack. Um, and again, he doesn't even talk about what makes Donald Trump a dictator. And he doesn't even talk about their rise to power, He, which was the point of the article. He just talks about what they did afterwards, which is completely unrelated. So I guess that's a structural thing. Whatever. It's just a... It's just a dumb, dumb article. I hope I made that clear, not just saying it's dumb. He, he, the Mussolini thing is the biggest thing. It's half of the article. Half of the article is about Mussolini and Trump. And the comparison is completely invalid. It's just wrong. Again, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. He's just wrong. He's just flat out wrong. And of course, this person, again, is a, a professor. Of course he is. I think he's a long-term and immediate danger to the country as one senior national security official. This is the end of the article. They must unite and vote for his Democratic opponent. The luxury of voting for a third party or not voting at all is no longer a sensible option for anyone wishing for a USA we can cherish. Well, a USA I could cherish would be one in which historians don't blatantly lie or just aren't so monumentally wrong that it's irresponsible. And look at this language. This is just communist language, too. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm reading some of his stuff. Unite. Workers of the world, unite. Yeah, yeah. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave it there. This really made me mad. I had some other things I wanted to go into, but um, I'm not going to do that. Because I, <laughs> I just ranted on, on the Mussolini thing. Anyway, um, if you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to this video. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter and lines. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.